So here we are today, we're at the Schiller Coastal Study Center. We're in beautiful Harpswell Sound. And for those of you who haven't been to the Schiller Coastal Study Center, when you get back to campus, make sure you come. Um, and what we're gonna be looking at today is mud. We're gonna be looking at the mud flats and the ecosystem of the mud flat. And so mud flats are created in low wave energy environments. And what happens is the fine grain sediments of soil settle out of the water column and they form mud. And that's different from a beach, which is also when, this, when the sediment settles out of the water column, but that's a more coarse grain. So mud is a fine grain sediment that settles out in a low wave energy area. And this, this environment is actually home to many kinds of creatures. Um, uh, who have adapted to life in the in this zone, I mean in this ecosystem. So again, in just like any ecosystem, zonation is really important. And what we have is a vertical zonation. The top layer will be oxygenated sediment. And as you move down through the sediment, the oxygen levels drop till you get down to a point of anoxia. And so the organisms have had to learn to adapt to life in this sort of anoxic environment um, that gets flushed by the tide every day. And sometimes stays, like today, um, might stay subtitle for the whole tidal cycle. So we want to think about who lives here. We have a number of mollusks. Um, bivalves in particular, uh, let's see, soft shell clam, ma um, the, the quahog, those are two commercially important species in Maine that people dig for. We have a number of polychaete worms, annelid worms, and they all live here. And when the tide comes in, some of those worms will come to the surface to feed, and that's when crabs, lobsters, and fish will come along and, and consume them. So that's kind of the cycle of life here. A lot of these organisms, as they're um, adapting to life in this mud layer, they, um, through their tunnels or siphons or whatever, they bring a little bit of oxygen and nutrients down into the mud. Um, I think that's all I want to talk about. What I want to show you is how, if I, if I take my shovel and put it into the mud, we're going to see if we can see how, if we can get to the anoxic layer. So, down into the mud. You can hear that. And if you turn it over, you can see, if we can see, this is kind of the shovel. On the top, this is oxygenated layer. It's still, um, the sediment is still a little more coarse where we are, and then you quickly get down into this really soft, like clay almost. It's really fine and it's anoxic. So these organisms have to adapt to life along an oxygen gradient from high to low in the mud. So one question. Yeah. How do these organisms get here? Oh, that's a really good question. So many of the organisms that live in the mud have um, plankton. They are part of the plankton. So they have their zooplankton, which means they're animal and they are a mirror plankton, which means they have a benthic phase, they're up in the water column, they, they get moved around by the currents, and then when they find a suitable location to settle out, they settle here. So they're a zooplankton, that's a mirror plankton, and many of the organisms that live here have um, both phases, yeah, benthic and planktonic. Good question.